Today on O'Fallon Matters, we're going to take you back in time to a very different O'Fallon. And we're going to share the history of one of our community's oldest landmarks, the School Street Water Tower. But this tower wasn't always there, and it's probably a bit newer than you'd expect. Nowadays, water is something we just take for granted, and the infrastructure that makes it possible, from the water mains throughout our community to the state-of-the-art water treatment plant that powers the system, is largely out of sight and out of mind. But it wasn't too long ago that O'Fallon didn't have a water system, and in the early 1900s, where your water came from was a whole different story. What I've always been told is that they relied on cisterns, which might have been a tank in the ground that they collected water from the roofs, which flowed into the cistern, which they would then get the water as they needed it. So you can probably guess by that, it wasn't always the best water, depending what might have been in the cistern along with the water. This particular uh, map goes back to 1905. The main source of water back in the early 1920s was the mill pond. Of course, that mill pond had to supply water for this the residents here and also for the railroad and also for fire protection. We've got a map, or not a map, but a picture of uh, what the old uh, firehouse was. That was actually, they had to lay lines to the mill pond to put water out. And it was a hand pump or a steam pump. Building cisterns and relying on the mill pond for water worked when the population of O'Fallon was a few hundred people. It's hard to imagine now, but back in those days, O'Fallon was little more than a railway stop and a few shops and stores. But as O'Fallon grew, so too did the burgeoning town's water needs, and it became apparent that the city would need a more permanent solution. O'Fallon was racked by two serious droughts in the 1920s and 30s, and as a rural community, if the land couldn't provide enough water, you were pretty much out of luck. With just 600 residents at the time, O'Fallon couldn't afford a water tower on its own, but help came from an unexpected place. In 1935, the United States Congress approved the Works Progress Administration as part of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal, and the WPA approached O'Fallon about building a well and tower in anticipation of future growth. If O'Fallon agreed to foot just 20% of the cost, the WPA would handle the rest, but it still represented an enormous cost to our tiny community, and it took four years and two mayors to get it passed. $150,000 in 1939 was a lot of money, and then the city's portion was going to be $40,000. But they still had to issue the bonds and get things going, get the engineering done. O'Fallon was just coming out of the Depression. Money was scarce. And that was a lot of money back in, uh, back in the day. And so people were a little skeptical of going into debt for the city to build water. But Mayor Westoff at the time, which is Paul Westoff, he was the mayor that broke the tie to get the water system actually started. And so even though it was controversial at the time, People in O'Fallon knew that they had to have a reliable source of water, and to do that, they needed a well and a tower. A city well had to be dug first. A lot of people don't realize that. That well was actually drilled right on West Elm Street. Years ago, when I worked for the city, that's where I used to report. That was well number one. It was drilled about 900 foot deep, but it only gave maybe 200 gallons a minute. But that was enough water for the time back in the 30s and 40s. Then, needed that tower, and the tower we're talking about, which is on School Street, 75,000 gallons. And now you have better pressure, you can put water out. And everybody, a lot of people, I was reading some of these articles I hadn't seen for a while, their insurance rate dropped dramatically when, they, when the new water system came online. With the tower in place, O'Fallon was poised to grow into the city it's become today. To give you an idea of how critical a reliable water system was in those days, Take a look at this 1958 advertisement for O'Fallon that points to O'Fallon's modern sewers and water system above everything else, and notably five bullet points above low taxes. It also became a local landmark, visible in photos from the era, and it became something of an attraction for O'Fallon's youth. I'm sure there's many people probably climbed it. I had to climb it, but I climbed it because I had to, part of my job. I basically climbed most all the towers in town, but it, uh, I'm sure that you could probably hear stories about people climbing it, but it wasn't a very safe thing to do <laughs> at the time. But I will say, I did try to climb the one on School Street, the tower we're talking about, and I think I made it about 15 feet up in the air before I uh, decided I was better off on the ground. So I didn't make it very far up. But yes, you know, that was always kind of a rite of uh, passage of childhood sometimes, is to try to climb the water tower. 
the School Street Water Tower served our community faithfully for decades. And even as new towers started to dot the O'Fallon skyline, our first tower remained in service. Finally, some 10 or 15 years back, this tower was emptied for the final time. It had several issues. Its capacity and location were no longer sufficient for the O'Fallon community, and it was basically superseded by more efficient towers elsewhere in town. Now, its story will be coming to an end, and this icon of O'Fallon will disappear from our skyline, but its memory will always be immortalized in old family photos and stories. It was one of those things you, you took for granted, but if you looked up, you always saw that water tower, and it was an older style tower, you know, it's not like the newer towers we have now, so it always stood out for its own, and it, it had a sense of character. And um, people always knew that was the first water tower for the city.